Hey guys, I don't want to waste your time. I want to jump right into what I think about the trailer. I just watched it and this shot is so fucking beautiful. This shot is a masterpiece. This shot is both what sucks about the ending and what's just brilliant about Attack on Titan in general. This shot is visual storytelling. So when I first saw this shot in the trailer, this is when my mouth dropped, honestly. Um, it really brought me back to Game of Thrones, Daenerys, right? When Daenerys burns down King's Landing and she, quote, becomes the dragon. And you see her dragon open its wings behind her. And it's visual storytelling. Oh, this girl literally became the dragon. That's why she fucking dracarist everything. And so if we apply that same sort of storytelling to this, what is this, what is this screen, what is this saying to us? What is the shot saying to us? This shot is telling us, in my opinion, this shot is killing AOE. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. This shot is fucking killing AOE. This shot is going... This shot is fucking going. Who's that annoying ass guy on Twitter? Ymir Exus. <laughs> this shot is going notch tears or whatever. How the fuck you say these people's names? This shot is saying Mikasa is the most free in Attack on Titan. <laughs> Even though it's the legit ultimate opposite, right? Mikasa's the most free in Attack on Titan. She chooses to be a slave. <laughs> but, and since she chooses to be a slave, that's the most free you can be. That's what this shot is saying to me. Now, do I really hope that we get some, like, I think it was, what, season three, where it was like, um, you know, Okay, imagine this. Imagine this. Imagine we see 139. We see the whole story play out exactly as it did in the manga. Then we get credits. And like, was that season three with the, with the um, serum bowl or whatever, serum gate, whatever the fuck you want to call it, choosing Armin or Erwin? We get like a scratchy ass like ending credits. And then we get the real ending. Imagine halfway through the episode. Let's say the episode is an hour and 40 minutes. At the, what, 40 minute mark, we get the credits. And then it scratches like that season three shit. And then, nope, you thought <laughs> we get freaking AOE right after. And it scratches at the divergence point, right? I don't know, guys. I'm not going to sit here and doom on you. I'm not going to sit here and say anything. Anything can happen, honestly. But it does, at this point, look one-to-one. -one. I'm just saying, what was interesting was the fact that the trailer ends with See You Later, Aaron. Now, that's something interesting. I'm not a theorist, so I'm not going to theorize on it. But that is something that caught my attention. We already saw that in part one. So why are we repeating see you later, Aaron? And if you notice uh, in the trailer, it's the angle of him laying down. So that could also give us some AOE credence, right? That could, that could, that's some good news for AOE. That is some really good news for AOE. If we show him laying down like we saw, because it was already weird, right? In part one. We get an adult Mikasa interacting with child Aaron. See you later. It's weird. It's strange. It's giving third person, unlimited, omniscient, whatever, God Mikasa. That's what it's giving. Um, which the shot is kind of giving. And so if, okay, if we think about it in terms of AoE, if we think about this shot in terms of AoE, of course Mikasa, you know, as paradoxical as it gets, She's the most free if she's restarting shit and enslaving Aaron. Of course, she's the most free. If she's enslaving the most free person in the series, then wouldn't that sort of make her the most free? I don't know. But at the same time, she's a slave to her feelings for him. So it's like, ooh, I don't know. Big paradox there. 
You guys can fucking sift through that. I'm not going to think about that too much. But we get the see you later scene, which is very odd in part one. We see both sitting Aaron and laying down Aaron. And it's a mess of memories, right? We all, we all know the mess of memories quote and whatnot. And so it, at the end of this trailer, that scene is emphasized. Him laying down. See you later, Aaron. I'm guessing that's what she said because I didn't look at any... Um, I didn't look at any uh, translations or I didn't see any subtitles. I just watched the Japanese raw. So it's looking like that see you later scene is highly emphasized, which would make a lot of sense, especially if it's like time travel, time loops, memories, whatever. So I'm not dooming, but I'm also not going to sit here and say, oh, like this is obviously some AOE stuff. I'm not going to sit here. I'm going to be that annoying fence sitter as always. We're just going to have to wait and see. Okay. Because it has to be explained. All right. And yeah, that's just my take on it. Um, do you guys like this fucking scene? This is. This is beautiful. Like this is the best shot of anything I've ever seen in my life. Okay, let me dial it back a bit. But this is a really fucking good shot. And you guys know from my other videos, I am a sucker for a good shot. Like symbolic, deep and meaningful shot like this. Ooh. That all being said, let me know what you guys thought about the preview. Let me guys know what you think. Like, is AoE dead? Is AoE alive? What do you think about the see you later being emphasized once again? And um, yeah, I, I'm... I won't say I'm surprised we didn't see the cabin timeline, but I do think that might be important for AOE, the fact that we didn't see it. Or maybe it's just like, ooh, that's the big twist for these anime onlys. AU, <laughs> whatever. Um, just let me know what you guys think. Bye. One more thing. We keep moving forward until the last frame of the anime. All right, bye. Comment, like, and subscribe. <laughs>